Well, the history of the mill, as far as it pertains to me, uh, started about uh, 30 some years ago when uh, John Hart, the fellow who owned it at the time, uh, decided it was time for him to sell. He was uh, about to turn 80 and decided that he wanted to uh, pass it on to someone else and no one in his family seemed interested in, in running it. And I'd been telling him for a number of years that uh, I'd be interested if he ever sold because I enjoyed bringing my children and now more recently my grandchildren down to the mill so they could see the way it operated in the old days and which it still was doing then and, and we're continuing to do today. The corn we grow is the white flint corn that uh, was growing here when the pilgrims arrived. Well, that corn really dates back to the Narragansett Indians. That's how it's called, Narragansett flint corn. As a matter of fact, when the, when the pilgrims did land, that's when one of the uh, things that they found laying in the sand. <laughs> they had to trade with the Native Americans to get their corn in order to have something to eat in the wintertime. And somehow that strain of corn has been kept alive by farmers here and then eventually the University of Rhode Island. There's one man here in, in town who's still growing it regularly and we buy from him. So it's a very unique product. Well, my name is Harry Records. This is Exeter, Rhode Island. And when you've been brought up with the earth and you've been through the hardships that, that you've seen your folks go through and experienced it with them, all right, a good year, a bad year, a good year, and a bad year. Well, there's something about it that if you're inclined to do it, you're going to stick with it because I'll do better next year, or I'll do this, or I'll do that, or I'll do the other. You know, so it's a challenge. This is a pretty good specimen of a ear. There's only eight rows of kernels. It grows cap because the kernels grow right over the end of the, of the cob. And it's called flint because it's so very hard. A sheller, corn sheller. Shelling the kernels off of the cob. I'm what you call a holistic farmer. I do it the old way and the new way. I do it both ways. Take a little bit of both. Make it as easy as I can. And the old way to keep the tradition. And the satisfaction of growing a crop, you know, I don't call it work because I like what I'm doing. Can the chaff flow out of it? See if there's any little pieces of cob left in there. See that corn is nice and clean. See that? Is that handsome? Once you get out of this area, no one knows what this corn is. Mm -hmm. And they think they know corn if you go down south or out west. Sure, they have cornmeal. Everyone has cornmeal. But uh, the flavor is something they've never experienced. You know, it has a unique flavor. So I'm doing something that I like, and it is. Uh, probably the reason that I'm still doing it because it's a unique thing. In fact, I don't advertise it hardly at all because I don't want it to become a job. I want it to always be a fun thing to do.